previously on Back of the Backlog. Alright. Oh. <gasps> Are you gonna explain what the fuck you're here? You came all the way here for a GameCube game? Let, Let me stay, stay for a little while. What if I said I brought you a game? Switch Fuck. And I'm still fucking pissed this is on the 3DS. The what? Oh, right. Well, Nintendo released this handheld with two screens called the DS. Two screens? Yeah, yeah. I mean, later on they released another generation uh, that featured 3D but without the need for glasses. What the fuck? For real? That sounds immaculate. I mean, look, it it's cool for a little bit, but that amazement wears off really quickly. Show me that now. Oh my god, it's coming at me! This is unbelievable! Why would you not want Luigi's Mansion on this? Well, because I'd rather not play in this tiny thing. Well, I'd argue the GameCube version probably looks and controls better. And the 3 dish was on its way out by then, man. But 3D! You gotta show this to Kylo and Niffler when they come back from the liquor store to buy drinks to celebrate your 21st birthday. <laughs> I'm pretty sure they probably wanted that to be a surprise. Oh, well, I mean, I don't really care. Are you drinking though? Of course. It'll be my first time drinking Earth alcohol. <sighs> well, alright, then there'll be multiple things to celebrate then. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely will be, my man. Definitely will be. I'm back at the back, back long. Been gone for way too long. I'm back at the back, back long. Got so many games to play, dog. I'm back at the back, back long. Donkey Kong Express, my dog. I'm back at the back, back long. Me and Kylo be fucking since dawn. I'm back at the back, back long. Did you know where Kylo West thongs? I'm back at the back, back long. I really fucking hate this song. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What is up guys, it is Robert at Gaming with me, and welcome to the 8th episode of Back at the Backlog, the series where we take a look at the games I recently beat off my backlog. Today's episode is on the game, The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening. What better way to start off not only a new year, but a new decade with The Legend of Zelda game? My past my history with the franchise is at least to me it sounds pretty big but in the grand scheme of things is pretty small the zelda games i've beaten prior to link's awakening are the wind waker twilight princess and of course <laughs> breath of the wild yeah um <laughs> my journey there's still a lot to go through i've only beaten actually four out of 17 yeah that's right but i do also have owned a lot more other ones like I do own the original Twilight Princess on Wii. I own uh, Skyward Sword. I own Triforce Heroes. I own Majora's Mask 3D. I own A Link Between Worlds. I also own Spirit Tracks, but, and then that's not it. I also own a bunch that are on Virtual Console that are, you know, Ocarina of Time and the original Legend of Zelda all on Virtual Console for Wii U. I just haven't played them. It's daunting seeing how many I have to go through, but one at a time, they'll each end up being a backlog episode someday. Link's Awakening is a first for the backlog series in which the version I'm playing only actually came out in September of 2019, but I did decide to make it a part of the backlog because it is after all a remake of the Game Boy original. I don't own Link's Awakening for the Game Boy, but I want to own it just to have it one day. 
The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening was released on August 6, 1993 in North America on the Game Boy. There was also an enhanced port of the game for Game Boy Color that was released on December 15, 1998, which was then released on the Nintendo 3DS Virtual Console on June 7, 2011. Like I said though, we are talking about the Nintendo Switch remake of the game that released on September 20th, 2019. If I played it when it originally released, well, I couldn't. Back then I would have been negative 6 years old. So I did finally play this game 27 years after its original release. That is a big number. The Link's Awakening remake was developed by Grezzo and published by Nintendo. Does this game hold up so many years regardless of it being a remake? Well, let's talk about it. First, we are going to talk about the story as always. Link is sailing when all of a sudden a storm destroys his boat and lands him washed up on Koalin Island. He's helped by Marin and this random owl talks to him and tells him how he must wake the windfish who is asleep in his massive egg. Only way to wake the windfish is by playing the eight instruments of the sirens. Right off the bat, visually this game is absolutely stunning. Honestly, this might be one of the best looking games I've ever seen, period. The classic original has that clean pixel look, but this remake is just so unique and honestly has this dreamlike feel if I do say so myself. I see what you did though. Yeah man, you get it? You get it? Ho <laughs> ho, yes sir, I do. Yes. The animations for Link and every other character is incredibly fluid. While it doesn't bother me, I can't help but notice that the game goes from 60 frames per second to 30 frames per second back to 60 frames per second whenever entering a newer area. It's odd and very un-Nintendo-like for that to just kind of slide by, and it doesn't ruin the experience at all, but it just it is very noticeable. The game immediately sucked me into its world. Colin Island is an incredibly well-designed world with a variety of places to see, faces to meet, and enemies to defeat. It's a nice and tight map getting you to new locations fast. At first I will say that there were times where I was confused as to what my next objective is and where I should go, but there are these telephone booths that are located throughout the entire island where you can call this old guy named Old Man Olaria and he'll give you hints as to where to head next. I hope I said that Old Man Olaria's man name right, hopefully I'm not sure, but we're gonna go with it. Oh man, Oluria. <laughs> now I would argue that the fact that these even exist show that it can get confusing, but it is still helpful and it is also funny because you can talk to old man Alaria face to face at his house, but he's a shy guy and ask you to please call him outside because he is so damn shy, which I thought was a really nice touch. The adventure you embark on will lead you to eight levels or dungeons that have their own each unique set of puzzles and bosses with one of the eight instruments at the end as your prize. Dungeons are a huge staple in the Zelda franchise, but the top down Zelda dungeons are very very different compared to a 3D Zelda like Wind Waker. All the dungeons in Link's Awakening are a ton of small rooms separated by locked doors. Each room essentially presents their own challenge whether it be to kill every enemy or solve a puzzle. They may sound quite simple but the last half of the dungeons get much bigger in scale with some of them being multiple floors long having you to remember where you actually had to go and where you have to be. Playing these dungeons for the first time can literally take you hours as you piece together what the next thing you should do is. Luckily they offer you some hints to some of the puzzles like for instance if you find a piece of a beak you can place it on owl statues that are scattered throughout the dungeon. Hidden in chest alongside the owl beak are the dungeon's map so you can see every room in its entirety and a compass which is helpful to see which rooms have hidden chest and where the final boss will be. All these dungeons are the highlight of your adventure. They are a ton of fun to explore and feel really rewarding when you're able to actually see every single door opened and every single chest opened. Some of the bosses can be way too easy though, like the anglerfish. I feel that some of these bosses feel too basic and don't present even the slightest of challenge. Although I do remind myself this is a remake of a Game Boy game. I actually died to the anglerfish a lot, at least like 10 times. For real? Yeah, honestly, because I think he looks pretty scary in this version. Wait, you were scared of the anglerfish? On my planet, anglerfish talk though. What the fuck? That's actually terrifying. Nah, I actually had sex with one once. Jesus, what the fuck? Oh my god. Oh my god. god. Oh my god. god. The there were two dungeons that I personally got stuck on, which were the last two. 
Level 7 or the Eagle's Tower is a huge dungeon that has 4 floors. My biggest issue with this dungeon is how specific your path has to be. If you go a different direction even slightly, you'll very likely have to backtrack a shit ton just to get back where you last left off. That very specific layout just makes it for such a super frustrating time. Level 8 or Turtle Rock has a section where the bow and arrow are required, but there's never a mention of the item needing to be a requirement throughout the whole game. So I had to leave the dungeon, buy the bow and arrow, and then head all the way back where I was. It's an inconvenience that could have been avoided if someone just said, Hey Link, uh, you kinda need the bow and arrow, bruh. Other than that though, the dungeons are some of the best parts of the game and are fantastically designed. Many of the dungeons grant you new abilities that help you out for easier traversal in the overworld. Abilities like the Pegasus Boots allows you to run and take out enemies with ease. Another favorite of mine is the Hookshot that allows you to shoot a hook and get you to new locations that you wouldn't be able to explore without it. One of the most memorable parts in Link's Awakening are all the cameos. There are many Mario enemies in this game. Yes, Goombas, Piranha Plants, and Chain Chomps. And motherfucking War from Super Mario Bros. 2 is in this bitch. That's right, motherfucking War. Princess Peach is seen, and Evil Kirby, and a lot more. It's, it's actually really damn cool to see a crossover that isn't called the Super Smash Bros. I love that idea, and, and, and I would wish they kind of do more of it. From the Animal Village, where animals are literally singing the song, to my favorite track, which is Marin's Ballad of the Windfish. Every time I pass Marin in Mabel Village, I literally stop for like 30 seconds and hear her sing. It's absolutely beautiful and gives me chills. What a pussy. <laughs> I'm not crying, I just thought of the fact that Solo flopped. Face it, man. This shit is... This, this shit is so beautiful. <laughs> There's a part in this game where a ghost starts following Link and tells you to take him to different locations. It's a really nice and actually pretty sad moment where the ghost starts to look at his past life. Having him look around his now abandoned house just makes me think when I one day pass and all the things I'll leave behind will also one day be abandoned. It's... Honestly, such a nice breath of fresh air in between the constant action and puzzle solving. After collecting all the instruments, it becomes time to go to the giant egg and play the song to crack open that egg and wake up the windfish. I genuinely had no clue what would be inside this egg. It was a mystery that I was very excited to solve. As I went inside, it was dark, and no matter where I went, I kept running in circles. No joke, I had no clue as to what to do. Turns out, I needed a magnifying glass to read a book in the library of Mabel Village. In the book, it tells you the path you have to take inside the egg. Interestingly enough, there is not one path. It's randomized. So if I told you the path that I took, it very likely won't even work for you. In order to get the magnifying glass, you have to do this whole trading sequence that you could have done throughout the entire game, but I didn't because I didn't think it was mandatory. Turns out, it is. <laughs> All you have to do is trade items with characters you meet throughout the journey. It's fun. I liked talking to all those characters and seeing what they would trade for what I was going to give them. But again, like the bow and arrow, I wish they just made sure you knew you had to do all this. Now I'm going to talk about the final boss just to let you know. After you find your path to the middle of the egg, you meet this shadowy figure called the Shadow Nightmare. And I gotta say, I thought it was really tough. I died many times due to how long the fight is. He takes on six forms, so every time you think you got him, he just changes his form. What's worse is the first form requires magic powder, and there were times where I ran out of it from dying so many times that I had to leave and get some more and then come back which was a pain and added to my rage. Here's some clips of me actually being pissed. Apparently my microphone was plugged in while I was recording, I had no clue. And so you can hear me getting pretty mad. It's it's pretty funny. And again, apparently people do this, you know, one try. People don't die at all in this whole game. I don't... Huge props to you guys. <laughs> huge props. Fuck! No, I gotta go all the way again. Are you fucking sucking my cock off, dude? Jesus Christ. God damn it! 
Oh! Are you serious? Fuck! Fuck! Bro, what the fuck is this? Oh my god, there's more? There's fucking more? Are you fucking kidding me? How long is this fucking battle? God damn it! Fuck! Fucking shit, man! At one point, I died and had to get more magic powder when I realized I could just load up my autosave which had magic powder stocked up. 20 of them. But I accidentally clicked on my last save which was all the way in the last dungeon. I freaked the fuck out thinking that the autosave was going to be gone. But luckily, it wasn't. I was able to go back straight to the boss. <laughs> I would have had to do the last dungeon and all the trading stuff again. I was going to lose it. Funnily enough though, when I fought him again, I only got hit once. Yeah, somehow I went from every heart lost to only getting hit once. I guess I just got the hang of him. When you finally beat him, the Shadow Nightmare tells you that their world is going to disappear. That their island is going to disappear. In fact, all the bosses you fight throughout every dungeon stated something similar. They tell Link to not wake the windfish, or else everyone on this island will be gone. But they are enemies, right? They're just trying to keep Link off track, right? Well, Link wakes up the windfish and he tells you he had a dream surrounded by people and animals. He says Colin Island will now be gone. It's not that Colin Island isn't real because... He states that the memory of that island makes it real. Both the Windfish and Link awaken and they show Colin and everyone on it disappearing. Fading away like they never existed. The enemies were telling the truth. Everyone is gone. Marin, the animals, the village people. Everyone is gone. They are now just a mere memory. And the memory, like the Windfish said, makes them real. Link is kind of the enemy in this game. If he never woke up the Windfish, all the people on the island would still be alive. The enemies were essentially just guards, knowing the consequences of waking the Windfish. It's a pretty dark ending for such a bright and vibrant world. I loved that ending. It's even more interesting if you get the perfect ending. At the very end, you see a vision of Marin with a seagull passing by. She tells Link earlier in the game she wishes she was a seagull and can fly far to different islands. I love that because, is that actually Marin? Did she get her wish? Or was it that the seagull reminded Link of her? It's never answered, but damn, it hits me hard. I love it so much. The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening is fantastic and has one of the most interesting mysteries with the Windfish and has a conclusion that's even better. I love that you can craft an interesting story with just some dialogue, not a million cutscenes. Overall, I'm gonna give The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening a... Ah, shit, that was great. Yes, I was confused at times, but damn, it's all worth it for that thought-provoking ending. Like, no, is Marin dead? Is everyone dead? Fuck you, Link. You killed everyone. Out of 10. What a great game. There's something so magical about Zelda games. I love the series and honestly can't wait to play more. Like I said earlier, expect a bunch more backlog episodes to feature Legend of Zelda games. So let me know, what did you think of The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening? Did you like it? Did you not like it? Let me know down in the comments below. I appreciate it if you share this with people. It, of course, as always, I always say it takes forever to do these videos. They take so fucking long. And do I always stretch when I say that? I think I do. You have to go back and check the other episodes. <laughs> But, uh, <laughs> all right, appreciate you guys joining, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks so much. Have a good night. The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening was a magical experience, but it is officially out of the backlog.
ready to go to your planet and fuck some alien chick. How <laughs> 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 that's what we'll do. They got the greatest holes in the galaxy by far. How do you speak the, the English language if you're born in a different hemisphere? This man said hemisphere. <laughs> this is planet retorted dick <laughs> I don't understand the geography niffler. I'm an actor, not a meteorologist or a fuck Indiana Jones is. Well, it's actually because of the color I wear. It can not only change my voice, but also the language. You could... You could speak to the voices? Yeah! Check it out! Hello, I'm the one and only Niffler. Holy shit, that's weird as fuck. Do Scarlett Johansson. I got a big crush on you and I just can't get a handle on it. Oh man, that's good. Keep talking to that voice. No, no, I'm not trying to get hard to Finn's voice. <laughs> oh, that's hot. That's hot. <laughs> <laughs> See, that, that, that was a good one. That was, that was, that was solid. That was a good one. Before I forget, I got you a gift. Oh shit! What is it? That's a game. Yeah, <sighs> appreciate it. I really do. You know me too well. You know me too well. Where is that? It's already downloaded on your PC. What? How? How the hell you do that? I can. Access your PC through my mind. What? That's pretty fucking creepy. Not as creepy as the porn you watch. Force show fucking? Oh shit, you finally gave it a chance. Yeah, don't knock it until you try feeding to it. <laughs> but for real, thanks, homie. I really appreciate it, man. Uh, I love you all. You know? I can't wait to play whatever the fuck it is. <laughs> <laughs>